Hey guys, we're uh, we're here with another video today. Obviously, it's what you're watching. So uh, we're gonna be doing a guide on like all things arena today. Uh, people seem to really be enjoying the beginner series that I've been putting out recently. So I'm just trying to go through every mode. So now we're at a uh, we're at arena. So this is gonna be covering everything arena. Maybe you'll hear some tips you didn't even know. So this could be for beginners and longer time players. I'll tell you all my tricks. Oh, I'm going to pass my mantle, my arena mantle, off to you guys. Obviously, I know what I'm doing. I came in second place one time in arena. So I'm a professional, and uh, you can accept that. That's my guarantee. So you come into arena. You're a new player. You're ranked like 6,000 something. You're saying, what do I do? How does this work? What's the best team? How am I supposed to even imagine getting up into the top people? This is insane. Everybody's stronger than me. These are all questions I assume that you have when you first get dumped into Arena. Those were the questions I had when I first got dumped into Arena. The difference is, is that now we have a lot more straightforward things to figuring out what teams are good, how to climb better, what to get out of the store. We have all that now. This is going to be one of those resources, but there are others as well that are more detailed than this is going to be. I'm sure that they're out there. You can you can find them. We're going to start off, right? So everybody has a reward payout. What that means is that when this timer expires, whatever time that is, because for some reason it seems like everybody's is different, is that whenever this expires, whatever rank you're at, you're going to get that reward. So you can look at rewards right up here. So when you look at you come into the rewards, right? So you're looking at the rewards, and you can just see. So this is what you're going to get depending on what you're at and what time things run out. So newer players are going to be down here because that's how it is. So you're going to be down here, 10 cores, 100 currency. Not great, right? So you definitely want to improve that. Cores, they really help you out. This currency allows you to buy more characters, which is going to help you get even higher. So you want to improve that. You want to grow in that. It gets to a good place around top 100 if you're able to get to top 100. It just kind of will depend on what kind of shard you're in or what not, I guess. So you can get there with a little bit of work, and uh, it'll be worth it. So... That's where I'm at. This is where I sit. I don't really try anymore because I just don't have time. But, I mean, I've placed, like I said, the highest I placed was two. I was ready and poised to get into rank one. But a little trick that some of the end game players use to protect their spot um, was kind of being used. And so I wasn't able to get up through it. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I wasn't able to get to it. So highest I finished is second. But I've been playing long enough to know. So... You definitely you want more arena currency, you want more cores. This is going to be like your main source of core income every day that you get these. And that can make a big difference having an additional 50 every day of the week as opposed to, you know, 75 or something. If you could get 100 or 150, it'll make a big difference every day because you get it every single day. So over a week's time, you know, this extra 50 from, you know, top 250 to top 100, the extra 50 there, I mean, it adds up. That's an extra 350 every single week. So you just save, and I mean, if you can rank higher, I know that I was ranking for here for a little while, and I just had, like, cores coming out of my brain. So there's definitely, a, the, the reason I'm saying all of this is just to put the emphasis on this mode is pretty important, and it can have lasting effects depending on if you do or do not pay attention to it. So when you come into the screen, you can see behind me the ranking, so you can click on that, you'll see where you're at. You can kind of, like, look at other people's teams and whatnot, find yourself. It's pretty interesting to, like, look at other people around you and just see like what teams they're running so you can click on them and you can see like their teams and you know it's like oh okay very interesting so i don't know i like to just look at that sometimes it's just kind of like oh okay shows the competition but so you're going to come in here you're going to have to set two teams right you have a team that you're attacking with you have a team that you set for defense and those are sometimes different sometimes teams that work on offense are just awful defenses my defense is just slightly different i have a seven red star shield trooper i have him on defense just because he's pretty crazy his counter attacks deal way like out of this world damage so i just put him there it's kind of hit or miss right there's no real set team like you have to run this team 
it's the best team because there, there isn't really anything like that right now. There's no team that's going to be better than the other because Red Stars are so crazy. Now, if you had all seven Red Stars, it was all equal playing ground, you'd probably have like X-Men at the top team. But because of that, not really having any equal footing due to Red Stars, you can pretty much run whatever you have big Red Stars of or really whatever you want if you have different, decent Red Stars on it. That being said, that was my defense. This is my offense. I have a video about this team. This team will always win on offense. But you have to have them, of course. And for if you're watching this beginner video, you know you're going to be probably a long time off from this because Ultron is who he is. Envisions on the hardest campaign node. Magneto's legendary, Phoenix legendary, Juggernaut, you can get pretty easily. So all of this to say, you can come in here and you're going to go to battles, right? So you've got three different things here. So just in case, I don't know if it would be clear. I don't know why it's not this way, but the battle on the far right is not necessarily like the furthest you can go, right? Because intuitively you would think, okay, so the one on the right is as high as I can go and these two are just mixtures. But it's not. So you can refresh and so it jumps to 80, jumps back to 77, 80, 80. 78, 78, 80, 76, 78, 76. And so it's just, it's different. It's like, I don't know why that should, that's a change that they should implement, but they have not yet. And so when you see this like little icon here, you've probably not seen this before. You can also see up here, four out of five. These are basically, oh, attempts. I didn't even know you could click on that. <laughs> so these get reset every 24 hours, as you can see. Pretty basic stuff. You get five per day. You can refresh with cores if you want to. I believe it's 25, 50, 100, but there could be two 25s in there for cores after you've used the five. You can also see that uh, if we do a battle, that there's like a timer between battles. I believe it starts at 15 minutes before you can do another battle. So keep that in mind when you're trying to climb ranks. If you're like, okay, I just need to win two more battles in the next 10 minutes to be able to get to rank whatever, such and such, whatever milestone you're trying to reach, you're either going to have to use cores or you're going to run out of time trying to do that. So you want to keep that in mind. Then you have the arena currency. Again, this can be used to buy stuff from the store. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But so you get in here, okay? So you do a battle, and this is just like any battle, right? So you come in, you pick your team, you can pick any characters you want. Get in here, it loads on in, right? So we're going in, and we're just going to fight this battle. After we fight the battle, it will just show like what that's like. If you win, you know it'll let you know how you win. So we'll fight this. Uh, this is pretty simple. So, like I said, this team always wins on offense. This is like a quick plug for that other video that I have. If you guys haven't seen it, maybe you're working with some of these teams, so you definitely gotta check it out. But this team, you always just ability block Ultron. Just a quick, quick pro tip: if you're uh, for some reason battling Ultron teams, you don't have Ultron. You want to ability block him, so you could potentially do that with Ant-Man. Ant-Man is a possible counter to Ultron just due to that. I would, But that's a team I would not recommend leaving on defense because they'll die. Because if you see a strong Ant-Man, you're going to definitely fight that team because you're like, what's this guy doing? I know I would. <clears throat> that's another pro tip I want to share is that, like, it's interesting, like, having unique teams like yeah you can have a unique team but you have to be careful because if your team is too unique you might be like winning on offense with it and you might be like oh this is probably going to be a great defensive team and it may be but if you use if you end up using a team that's just like so unique a lot of times you're going to get fought more because people are going to be curious like if they can beat it and with the way that the current meta is is that pretty much anything like if you're at the same rank as somebody, you can probably beat their team a lot of times. Unless, again, unless you're fighting an Ultron team without a proper Ultron counter. So it's interesting because if you use a unique team, then a lot of times people are going to fight it. So you do want to be careful about that, too, because you don't want to draw unnecessary attention to yourself. So there you go. So we win the battle. Easy peasy. And now that we've won, it'll come in, it'll show your rank. Okay, so you went from 89 to 76, and then blah, whatever. So we'll go back to the menu, we'll look at the store. Well, first of all, so I can show you this. So it's it has a 15 minute timer. The timer starts from the time you start the battle. So it's not when you finish it, but it's from the time that you start the battle. So it took us about two and a half minutes to beat this, that was pretty easy. So now if I just wanted to battle again immediately, I could go ahead and refresh for 25. It costs 25 to refresh every time until you run out of attempts, then you have one more 25 after that, 
then 50, and then 100. Like I said, it may be 225s at the end. I can't remember. I don't often do that unless I'm doing stuff for a video, so it's not something I'm super familiar with, but that's really not that big of a deal. So you come to the store next, and you still, you know, like every other store, there's tons of characters in here. So in the very beginning of the game, you ought to be farming Daredevil, right? That's what everybody says because it's good for defenders. So I tend to agree with that. You want to farm Daredevil, and this is not a farming guide. So, you know, no farm him to like five star, six star. It's up to you. That's something that can be talked about much more in depth than, like I said, another video about farming, which we may have coming up soon if people are interested in that. Let me know in the comments if you'd want to know like a beginner farming guide, and we can definitely make that happen. Probably Daredevil is who I would suggest doing. So you can get that defenders team up and running, right? So you get your defenders team up and running. You want to use that in Arena for a little while. It's not going to last forever, so it just you want it to just be a temporary fix. As far as these things go, it's really going to just depend on what you want. If you remember watching the Blitz Beginner Guide, I talked about farming characters for Star-Lord because there's quite a few of Star-Lord type or based characters in the Blitz store. So this is no different. You can get Drax. He can be used for Star-Lord, and you pair him with Mantis, Rocket, Groot, whoever else, and he ends up being a pretty solid character on the team. And so if you were to just run a pure Guardians team, you'd probably do Drax, Mantis, uh, Gamora, Rocket, and Groot. Now, when you get Star-Lord, you'd swap out Gamora. And that team's not bad. You could use that for Arena, too, if you want to. Rocket and Star-Lord make a very good team. Rocket and Groot make a very strong team. So that's just a quick tip. You could start with Defenders, then rotate to... The Guardians, you know, as you unlock more characters, you know, Minerva, Magneto, people like that, then you can switch that around. It's just going to depend, right? So my recommendation is starting with Daredevil, then doing Drax. From there, it just kind of depends. Quake used to be a very strong character. She's kind of fallen out of favor now. Mordo's pretty decent, but he's also used to get Phoenix, so that's pretty important. Deadpool is all right, but he is a solid character or he's a character that you need for the payday event which is a big deal and then you know hydro armor guard is nothing aim researcher right now till we know the rework soon is nothing may still be nothing we're not sure hand archer you can use him for the relic event so it's like someone you want to farm eventually shield security when you have nick fury he's the best tank in the game well not the best he's the best with nick fury i mean he's the best tank you can have on a nick fury team and uh, so you're going to want him eventually, but you want to be like building up to have that stuff first, right? So if you're not going to get Nick Fury for six months, it's really not a big deal to farm shield security. Scarlet Witch, she's pretty good. She's like just kind of middle of the road, pretty good. M'Baku, use them for Wakanda teams. Wakanda teams aren't really great right now. I don't know. Some people really seem to like them. You know, Vulture, I'm trying to finish him up for myself. Or, you know, use him, obviously, for Shuri Unlock and Invisible Woman Unlock if you want to. That's what I recommend. And so he's pretty strong with Sinister Six. That's one of my favorite teams. I don't think it's anything you need to worry about right away, though. And then Juggernaut. He's very strong. So I would probably say somewhere in between Daredevil, Drax, Mordo, and Juggernaut. Those are probably the people you're going to want to be doing first. Shield security fits in there somewhere too. I typically recommend maybe getting to about five star first because then that way you're not like pouring all your resources in for months and months and months, especially when you're higher ranked in arena. And so I hope all of that makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, again, comments are there so that I can continue to help after the video's over. So leave comments. I will, I always respond and uh, we'll go from there. Maybe I can help you guys out if you have any further questions. Now, you might be saying, okay, so we have these kingpin vault orbs, and I can resoundly tell you these are not worth buying. Do not buy these. They're terrible, and maybe, I don't know who, honestly, I don't know who buys them. People sometimes talk to me about them in my stream, and they're just awful. When I've bought them, they're terrible, you know, because, like, for some people, this is going to be a couple days worth of arena to get one of these. It's not worth it. You might get like one or two gear pieces and like one orange material and like two ABCs. It's not worth it at all. I do not ever recommend this ever. So interesting fact, what you can do is I mentioned this briefly earlier. If you're being, at, if you're attacking somebody, your team can be attacked. 
So let me say that again. If you're attacking somebody, so say I'm going four, rank 66. Okay. So somebody else, say the 89 rank that I was just at, say 89 attacks me when I'm attacking 66. Well, if that person beats me, they're going to get jumped up to rank 66. And I'm going to shoot back to 89, even though I beat the 66 guy. I don't know if this was intended, but it's been this way since the game came out. And uh, Fox Next has just said it's kind of a thing. It's just a mechanic. I don't fully understand it, but that's kind of how it is. So if you ever see like, hey, I just beat rank 55 and now I'm jumped back to 76. Like, that's why. It's kind of a weird mechanic. It doesn't happen all that often to me. It happens when you get like much lower, like in the top 10, top 20. It definitely happens a lot more, but it doesn't happen as much at this rank. Now, the other little interesting tidbit with that is that when you are being attacked, so like say I was attacking 66, 66 can't be attacked by anybody else. They'll say, oh, they're engaged in battle. And so nothing will happen then. Like two people can't attack the same team at the same time. So that's that's nothing. But you can be attacked, and it's called slingshotting. I don't really know. You can't really like do it intentionally. It just kind of happens, and just sometimes it works out great for you. Sometimes you could be the guy in the back who thought you were going to rank 66, but instead you end up at 55. I mean, I have friends who were attacking people, and they were attacking like spot number like six or something, and then they got slingshot into first place, and they got you know number one payout for their arena. So it happens. It's kind of an interesting concept. But nothing that you really need to worry about, but I only recently learned what that was, and I'd heard of it for a long time, so I just wanted to share that. I figured that you guys might find it interesting or just helpful to kind of know all about that. Your rewards come to, like I said, your inbox. When this timer is finished, you'll just go, you claim them, done. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much, uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, covering of Arena. I think that really touches on everything that you're going to want to know and need so if this helped you, I would appreciate it if you leave a like on the video. If you enjoyed it, uh, make sure to subscribe. We're growing. It's awesome. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting. And that's it. That's all we got. That's the end of the video. We'll have another one uh, this week sometime. We may have a couple more this week. Kind of hard to tell. Just depends on if there's anything that comes up that's interesting. We don't know when Graviton's coming out or anything like that. But as soon as that comes out, you know that uh, we're going to be covering it right here. So if nothing else, guys, we'll see you then. I appreciate you. You guys are awesome. Thanks for the support. Bye.